This meeting is being recorded. All right, just give it a minute for attendees to populate before we call the meeting to order. <laughs> Great. All right, I see our two applicants in here. So why don't we go ahead and call the meeting to order? Someone wanna? Good evening. Yeah, there we go, Paul, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call uh, tonight's meeting of the Jersey City Historic Preservation Commission to order. It is, um, I'm not sure what the time is. 6.34. 6.34. Okay. Please be advised that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the time, date, and place of this regularly scheduled meeting of the Jersey City Historic Preservation Commission was sent to the Jersey Journal, the Jersey City Reporter, and Ellis Besolito on Thursday, March 30th. Same notice was sent to the clerk's office for posting on the bulletin board outside of City Hall and on the city website. I have proof of this notice here in evidence up on the screen. Bridget, if you wouldn't mind marking this as B1. B1. Thank you. All right, we'll move to a roll call attendance. Commissioner Gucciarda? Here. Commissioner Amatuza? Here. Commissioner Gordon? Present. Commissioner Gariga? Here. Uh, Commissioner Cronin? Here. Okay, Commissioner Lewis is absent. Commissioner Sakong is absent. Commissioner Stango is absent. Commissioner Gunther is absent. Vice Chair Sandcamp is absent. And Chairman Blazak is absent. There are five members of the commission in attendance. Five affirmative votes are needed for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, due to the absence of our vice chair and our chairman this evening, staff recommends that the commission make a motion to appoint a member of the commission as acting chair for this meeting. Motion to appoint Paul Amatuzo as acting chair for this meeting. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Paul will be our acting chair for the evening. All right, continuing down the agenda, approval of minutes. Um, staff, the links for the minutes are not working. So staff recommend, uh, staff's gonna recommend that these items be carried to our next regular meeting. Uh, if anyone wants to make a motion to just carry those items. Motion to carry. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, correspondence, all application materials are linked on tonight's agenda through the application number link for each case. Um, all copies of correspondence are included in there as well. Um, for announcements, um, staff has two announcements this evening. The first is that um, case 8A H22-429 218 5th Street um, has been carried by request of the applicant to our next available HPC meeting, which is May 15th. 2023. So if there are any members of the public in attendance this evening for that application, um, they should come back at the May 15th meeting, which the Zoom link will be available on the city calendar. Um, our next announcement is that items 11, uh, item 11 on tonight's agenda, the election of officers, that item um, will be carried to our uh, next HPC meeting, which is April 24th. We don't need a motion for that one. Just the, those items will be discussed and carried to that meeting. All right. Um, next Maggie, can I ask one quick question about Fifth Street since I was just reviewing sure. the application? Sure. Uh, do you, can you recall offhand what standards there of, of historic preservation, they're, they're, which design standards they're following? Is it restoration? Is it preservation? Is it uh, stabilization? I was just trying to understand what they were doing. Um, that is not my application. However, oh, sorry. my right, understanding is that it's a combination. It's like, I, I would say it's like our standard standards, a combination of rehabilitation and restoration. We have been restoration. Um, when that does co come to the meeting, you'll of course get an updated staff report from Dan. Of course. Okay. Thanks so much. All right, 
So next is open public comment. If there are any members of the public in attendance tonight who would like to speak regarding matters of historic preservation that are not on this evening's agenda. So none of the, neither of the two cases in new business, if you'd like to address the commission on something else, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. Um, alternatively, if you're on the phone, you can press star nine. Okay, staff sees no hands raised and recommends a motion to open and close public comment. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, as we said in announcements, case 8A is being carried to the May 15th meeting, which means the next item on the agenda is the first case in new business. Paul, if you would like to call that. Sure. Um, this is case number H22 110. The applicant is Brandon Smith on behalf of Isla and Yekaterina Gordon. Uh, the address is 153 Sussex Street, block 14203 5 in the historic Paulus Hook District. Certificate of appropriateness for interior renovations and construction of a rear addition and deck not visible from the public right of way at an altered contributing Italianate influenced row house built circa 1855 in the Polis Hook Historic District. Recommendation to the Jersey City Zoning Board of Adjustment. Okay. Um, Brandon, prior to your presentation, we're just gonna have to swear you in and remind me if you've presented to this board before. This will be my first time presenting. Okay, so after we swear you in, we're just going to quickly qualify you as well. Okay. Raise your right hand if you sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And just state and spell your full name for the record, please. It's David Brandon Smith, D A V I D B R A N D O N S M I T H. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Brandon, if you could just very, very, very briefly give the commission a overview of your qualifications, including if you're a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey. Sure, yes. Uh, licensed architect, state of New Jersey and in New York as well. Um, have almost 20 years experience, or I think 2023 would be my 20th year of experience, um, mainly in residential, also uh, occasionally small commercial projects. Um, I have worked in Manhattan with uh, landmarks uh, on some of the projects that are within landmarks district, but this is my first uh, presentation to Jersey City Historic. Uh, Great. And I'm actually a Jersey City resident uh, as well. Wonderful. Staff recommends that Acting Chair Matuzo accept uh, Mr. Smith's qualifications as an expert in the field of architecture. Paul, yes or no? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, great. All right, and then last, last thing. Brandon. thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Um, last thing, Brandon, the photo, the file that you have up on screen right now, was this submitted as part of your application materials? Yes, it was. Great. All right, you are good to begin your presentation. Okay, uh, I'm showing the, the front of the house at 153 Sussex, but we are only dealing with the rear of the house. Uh, this is as it exists currently, uh, uh, an old deck that exists uh, is rotting and, and starting to fall down. Um, there's an existing kitchen behind this window, uh, dining room here at these French doors. Uh, the client would like to expand the rear kitchen um with a bump out here and then at the basement expanded out fully uh so that way the underside of deck would be filled in uh and replacement of these um doors and windows and have matching ones at the basement level uh and then above the kitchen addition uh replacing this window with a door that would access the the top of the deck um so to take you through those drawings um this is a lot in question here. Um, this is a 75 foot lot versus the neighboring property that's a 100 foot lot, um, not visible. There's a small alleyway uh, going back to the pictures, but it's blocked by uh, other structures uh, and fences from view. <clears throat> 
um, so to take you through the existing site plan uh, at the rear, the street is at the bottom, uh, the rear property line is at the top. Um, as it exists now, we're leaving everything in place as is except for uh, the new addition. The steps where they currently come down, we're holding that line, so we're not going any further past that. Um, however, we are beyond the rear yard setback of 30 feet, so we are um, going before the planning board for a variance request on it, uh, but we are at 30% um, if you take the 100, 100 foot um, lot and divide that to get the 75 foot lot setback. Um, see you can see here at the um the main floor the first floor where the kitchen expands from its current position uh over that bump out the rest is deck with steps that lead down to the lower level um and then above that is where the door would be added um to go out onto the little balcony that then accesses the roof that's the roof deck that's above the kitchen uh, a few, just the elevation of the rear. Um, and then showing sight lines from uh, Sussex Street, uh, showing that it's not visible. Um, and then some of the construction details, window details. Um, and then doing hardy siding. Um, all the windows are a black aluminum clad um, pillow window. Uh, it's our window schedule. The light fixture and then the door hardware for those in a um, old dark or or a bronze. Sorry, I may have gone through that pretty quickly, but uh, yes, to give gonna, a big I was going to ask you to go a little slower so I could take a, a little bit more of a look at each of those uh, drawings, sure. if you don't mind. Sure. Yes. Uh, so I will go back to the basement level. Existing demolitions on the left, proposed on the right. And if I need to zoom in, if you need to read any of the notes or anything like that, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. And then one floor up, the parlor floor, first floor. Currently, the kitchen sits within this small little footprint. Um, so we're opening up this wall to let the kitchen expand out further. And the uh, the extension is only two story, is that right? That's correct, yes. And then on top of the second story, there's a, a, a deck above? Yeah. Correct. Okay, yes. got it. Then we go to the elevations, existing elevations on the left, proposed is on the right. And then this is the side view. Um, materials being used to the adjoining properties, left and right of you, this, those, those side walls on the extension. They would all be the hardy. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sections. detailing. <laughs> the railings are metal. 
For the upper part above the kitchen would be the metal aluminum railing. The lower section um, is the, the wood railing detailing. So it's matching more what the existing is there. Mm -hmm. Is only the kitchen area being extended on the second floor? Correct. Okay. And there's the walkout deck from the dining area. Let's get back to that. That's okay. just the dining room currently. So there is that that deck space, but the only internal space on this level is the uh, the kitchen. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other commissioners have any questions? All right, if no commissioners have any other questions, um, Brandon, does that include your testimony? Uh, yes. Great. All right. Um, we can move to open public comment. If there are any members of the public who would like to speak regarding this application, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. If you're on your phone, you can press star nine. Okay, staff sees no hands raised and recommends a motion to open and close public comment. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Sarah, you wanna take away staff comments? Sure. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. You yes. see, I will skip down to staff comments and recommendations. Uh, okay. So the scope of this project was reviewed according to the City of Jersey City Zoning Ordinance. Um, the historic preservation review procedures, the city of Jersey City uh, historic design standards, and the Secretary of the Interior standards for historic preservation. HPC staff finds the application to be mostly consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards for historic preservation. The proposed rear addition, terrace, and deck will not be visible from any public right of way and appear to be consistent with the existing block paradigm and development patterns of the area. In HPC staff's opinion, the project as proposed will not cause adverse effects on the character and or integrity of the historic resource or the Paul's Hook Historic District. HPC staff recommends approval, certificate of appropriateness, and recommendation to the Zoning Board of Adjustment with the following conditions. And it is just our standard conditions, including that no portion of the rear addition and terrace or deck shall be visible from any public right of way. Does the commission have any questions for staff? No. Uh, I assume this Commissioner Gucciardo, Sarah, that there's some relief given on the 30 foot setback because of the depth of the lot? Yes, that's because it's an undersized lot. And, that, and, and they are going before the Zoning Board of Adjustment for variance. Right, right. And Stephen, the setback that they're proposing here follows our similar standard of a proportional setback for an undersized lot. Um, so a lot this side, they're actually um, providing a much larger rear yard than a typical proportional setback. That, that makes sense. Thanks for that clarification. And my second question was, was there any conversation about, I mean, I, I don't find this to be that objectionable, but varying fence materials from downstairs to upstairs. Is there any, I mean, I know it can't be seen from the public right away, but mm -hmm. I just thought consistency of materials might've been a good idea. I mean, was there any discussion about that? On, honestly, no. 
because staff was was understanding the the saw process of leaving the the first story consistent with the existing stairs especially mm -hmm. since the stairs are staying oh and i got it i understand yeah. now thank you that yeah, clarifies that's, that's what it they, for they me say with the wood understood okay uh, if there are no other commissioner questions for staff um, again, the recommendation here is for the approval of a COA and a approval, a recommendation for approval to the zoning board. I'll make a motion to issue a C of A and to recommend approval to the zoning board. Second. Second. Okay. Move to a roll call vote. Commissioner Gucciarda. Aye. Commissioner Griega? Aye. Commissioner Cronin? Aye. Commissioner Gordon? Aye. And act, uh, Acting Chair Amatuzo? Aye. Okay, for the record, Commissioner Lewis is absent, Commissioner Kong is absent, Commissioner Stango is absent, Commissioner Gunther is absent, Vice Chair Sandcamp is absent, and Chairman Blazak is absent, which means there are five votes in favor, none against, no abstentions, and the COA and recommendation to the Zoning Board is granted. Very much appreciated, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Our next case is, just hold on one second, my phone shut off again, is um, case number H20 372. The applicant is John Visconti Esquire for the French American Academy. The owner is the parish of St. Mary's. The address is 209 Third Street, 205, and to 2-15 Third Street. Um, block number 11301, lot number one. And this is the Harsmas Cove Historic District. Paul, I don't know if we're reading the right one. 209 Third Street? No, this one oh. is 269th Street. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I only got confused when she started reading the block okay. and lines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. This is case number H23-028, Dirk Garlic, architect on behalf of Dennis Newber, owner. Um, the address is 260 and a half 9th Street, block number 8605, lot number 7 in the Hamilton Park Historic District. This is a certificate of appropriateness for interior renovations and construction of a bulkhead at an altered contributing Italianate row house built circa 1870 in the Hamilton Park Historic District. Great. All right, Dirk, you should be able to unmute yourself. So let's go ahead and swear you in. Good evening. Hey, Dirk. Did you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And state and spell your full name for the record, please. Dirk Garlic, D-E-R-K-G-A-R-L-I-C-K. -E Thank you. Um, staff notes, Dirk has been previously qualified in front of this board as an expert in the field of architecture many times. Um, you should be able to share your screen, Dirk. There we go. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, we have a project here at 260.59th Street, Jersey City. Uh, long time resident. Uh, we have an existing deck that's on his roof. Uh, there's a larger application that, that has already been approved that you'll see a lot of notes and information per pertaining to that application. Uh, but our focus this evening is to look at the rooftop uh, to uh, propose access uh, to in the existing deck that's up there, renovate the existing deck, and, and provide a bulkhead and an interior stair. Um, so it is directly uh, across from uh, the park. So it's very important uh, that we continue to maintain the, the street facade line. 
and the cornice line that we see uh, from the street here. Uh, as we said, there is a, there's a deck and a railing that's, that's there and set back uh, from that cornice line already. And the objective is to repair that deck and provide access. Uh, these two uh, photographs, number 10 and number 11, are a good representation of what's up on the roof. This is the existing deck structure and it's kind of dilapidated form that he's accessed for 50 plus years uh, through this uh, roof hatch that goes up to the roof. Uh, uh, what we have uh, taken under consideration is the adjacent properties and the precedence of having uh, a bulkhead accessing the roof deck on their property. And in, uh, uh, in the same way, this bulkhead is not visible you know, from the street, uh, from the park side either. Uh, so it gives us uh, a strong confidence that we'll be able to you know, build and match the shape of this uh, bulkhead and ensure that it's not visible from the street, uh, from the primary facade. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, just so everyone is aware, uh, is that uh, from 10th Street, way back on the other side of the block, like peering over the parking lot and through the buildings uh, here on the key plan number 12, uh, you will see the back side of the new railing. Uh, you know, from a, from a from a distance, far distance away, and and if you were to uh, to go around the corner on um, on uh, Jersey Ave, as if you look up from the across the street over where uh, the Hamilton Inn kind of area is along the sidewalk, it, the the upper part of that uh, railing will probably vis be visible as well. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that's you know in the record and that we're not under any you know, kind of false pretense that that might not be seen from those two uh, oblique uh, perspectives. Um, overall, the, the, the I'll just briefly go over the renovation of the pro. The, it is getting a gut rehab. Um, he's kind of a building. He's been, like I say, a long, long time resident here. Uh, he's lived in this house uh, his whole, almost entire life, and now he's. Uh, Building it out is his his uh, dream retirement home, and he's you know really excited about the project. So, uh, getting access as uh, a person going into retirement to his roof deck is something that would be uh, uh, really important to him. Uh, this here is the existing roof plan. Uh, so, I'm just going to kind of point out over on the left hand side is the stair bulkhead to the roof deck on the adjacent property. Uh, this is the size and shape configuration of the existing roof deck, has the condenser located in the corner towards the front and a little roof hatch is how they currently access this deck. Uh, our proposal is to come up the stairs, turn, provide a little landing and exit out onto the roof deck and move that condenser from uh, the front side uh, to the back behind, um, uh, behind the bulkhead kind of in line with what um, uh, the adjacent property had done. And it also helped kind of control the noise um, from the condenser out to the, the front areas. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our bulkhead specific plan, just showing our interior of the stair. It's a winder that comes up, lands on a you know minimal landing. Uh, if this is a, as tight as we can make it in order to get the clearance. Uh, to come up the stair and around into a winder. So so pulling this back really wasn't an option. So this this is the minimal you know, uh, size of bulkhead that we could create up there uh, physically and, and to comply with code. These are the existing and proposed front elevation. So you can see there's a, a number, uh, you know, a great deal of work that's going to go, occur and getting the windows and infrastructure updates. Uh, again, another, some more photos of the rear facade and the roof deck colors that will be used. And the outside of the proposed uh, bulkhead is going to be a fi the fiber cement siding boards, James Hardy, 
in Abut Bay blue. Uh, and the sloped portion is just a black uh, built up roof. Um, and we found that uh, doing like a black uh, trim boards is uh, better than like a white trim board. So that it just helps minimize the look and effect of the overall uh, appearance of the bulkhead. Um, these are more elevations, side and front, existing and proposed. These are our color pattern, uh, pad palettes. Um, we have a sight line over the, uh, of, the exist of the existing building with the bulkhead and the AC condenser on the back. We have our blow up sections, again, indicating the sight line. And just uh, so here you can see how tight, you know, the winder steps are to get up there. But uh, this is um, about as, like I say, about as tight as we can make it. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to review questions on materials um, or details of the project. Um, happy to share our thoughts and considerations that our clients had and anything that we've considered in developing the project. Are there any questions? Derek, the cream color in the in the color chart there, where is that being applied to the bulkhead? Uh, this is the color for the uh, the rear facade. So that that oh, doesn't okay. get applied. It, yeah. it doesn't get applied up top. It's just Correct. the it's just the after midnight and the black. So it's going to be a, a dark bulk bulkhead. That's correct. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Sorry, we, we weren't sure the best way to show this. Uh, so we just indicated like with area of work to try to delineate uh, what was coming before this application and what was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, included in the overall. So no worries. If you don't mind. Yeah. And the other question was the railing material on the bulkhead, on the uh, deck, on the roof. Uh, we're doing a paint, uh, painted metal railing okay. uh, so it'd be a tube steel yeah okay very good thank you and that's black as well yes correct okay. thank you yeah. sorry i'm a bit confused i think that on the agenda this was described as comprising interior renovations and then the bulkhead but there's also references to alterations to the primary facade is that right i saw something about changing out the windows I can answer that. So on the staff report, there's a, it's just like a line within the project history. Um, this application was bifurcated. There were two that came in. One was a staff approval, and that was for most of the work on the front facade, some of the interior renovations, and then um, the interior renovations for the roof deck, so like the stairs, and the roof deck itself is represented in this application. But when they come in and file, it'll be comprehensively for the whole project. We just wanted to get them some approvals at the staff level where we could. So the front facade is not within the scope of what we're reviewing right now? No. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So then I, I think my question is probably more for staff, but um, there was a reference to precedents set by neighboring properties that have similar bulkheads. Um, were those, are, are, do we have confirmation those have been approved by the HPC? So Dirk actually has up a great photo right now, or a great, yeah, Dirk, scroll down, not photo. I meant plan. Um, but the, yeah, so there's, you can, you can see next door. Yeah, there's the bulkhead there. It's not visible from the public right of way. Um, that, my understanding is that that bulkhead is very old. Um, I honestly did not look and see if it was approved by the HPC, but this bulkhead that they're proposing is consistent with what we approve across historic districts. So it, I, I really didn't see any concerns with it that way. I don't really uh, recommend things based on precedent. It's just, I think they kind of copied the location more than anything else. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions? All right, hearing none, Dirk, does that conclude your testimony? It does. Great. All right, um, let's move into open public comment. 
there are any members of the public in attendance who would like to speak regarding this application, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. Alternatively, if you're on the phone, you can press star nine. Okay, staff sees no hands raised and recommends a motion to open and close public comment. Motion to open and close. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, move into staff comments for this one. All right, so like always, I scrolled. So actually, while we're here, though, um, just if you can see where I just highlighted here, um, this is where we mentioned in the staff report that there's a previous approval for interior renovations, window replacement, things like that. Um, scrolling down to staff comments and recommendations. Like I said, kind of implied earlier, this is a pretty standard roof deck application. Um, the addition of the bulkhead rather than the roof, the existing roof hatch is what triggered it coming to the HPC because we were adding something on the roof that was not not like an air conditioning unit. Um, but overall, it's consistent with the pattern of development within the historic districts. It's um, with the exception of the railing being minim minimally visible from a non-primary facade very far away, it's not visible from the public right of way. And staff does not believe that there's going to be an adverse effect either on the historic resource or on the historic district. So we recommend um, the approval of a certificate of appropriateness. You can strike in the staff report where it says zoning board of adjustment. That is a carryover that I did not pay attention to. Um, this does not need zoning board. It's only ASUI. Um, it also mentions the rear addition and terrace yeah, that's that's me not paying attention as I write a staff report more than anything else. Um, regardless, it, it, the roof deck is fine. We don't think there's going to be any adverse effect. Um, we have our standard conditions for this approval. Um, we did add one at the top that says all conditions that were approved under their cone for their interior work and front facade work remain in effect for this approval as well, since the work will be done concurrently. Um, and then after that, we have our uh, standard conditions with our standard roof deck conditions that it, there's no lighting currently on the roof deck. I anticipate that we'll get a deviation request for some lighting. And when we get that, it has to be downcast. Um, and that no portion of the roof deck or specifically the accessories um, should be visible from the public right of way. So, you know, no uh, vegetation or arborvitae part, uh, planted in a planter box up there that's poking up that you can see from the park. We don't want that. Maggie, um, that, that, that addresses one question I had, which was on the photo of the old deck, there is a satellite dish or uh, uh, mounted to the railing of the, of, the, of the deck. So I just wanted to confirm, I think this covers it, that there won't be an appurtenance that's going to be visible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm going to be honest, something like that, I we don't really have a lot of control over where they decide to stick those things, but they don't really put new antenna, new satellite dishes on things anymore. So I'm not super worried about that in particular. But yeah, this, this condition would cover, I, I mean, and this condition doesn't say that you can't have them. It just says that they can't be visible from the public right of way. So I'm, I'm understood. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that just means that if your umbrella is visible, it just, you know, take it down at the end of the day. Um. Other than that, standard conditions. So again, staff recommends that the commission approve a CO, uh, make a motion to approve a COA. Or take any questions from staff. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second it. The conditions. All right. We'll move to a roll call. Commissioner Griega? Aye. Commissioner Cronin? Aye. Commissioner Gordon? Aye. Commissioner Gucciarda? Aye. Commissioner Lewis is absent. Commissioner Sakong is absent. Commissioner Sango is absent. Commissioner Gunther is absent. Vice Chair Sandkamp is absent. Chairman Blazak is absent. So Acting Chair Amatuzo. Aye. Great. There are five votes in favor, none against, no abstentions. The COA is granted. Thanks, sir. All right. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Commissioners. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Good day. You too. All right. So my hopeful prediction that we'd be done soon is accurate. 
All right, let's finish up the agenda. I completely forgot. We have something very exciting towards the end of <laughs> within tabled cases. I'm so sad. I'm so sad that Brian is not here to do this. 148 Jewett, no longer an active application, guys. We can make a motion to dismiss without prejudice. <laughs> Motion. All that means is that when they're ready, <laughs> they just file a new application. But right. it will, they've they've contacted me, said they're not pursuing the project at this time. So it can come off if someone wants to make a motion. We're going to miss it. Uh, we, we've talked about this before, but not recently. What does it take for one of these cases to not be considered active? Do they have to tell us? Because we have some of these very old cases cluttering up the um, agenda, and it is confusing. So... So the, the, they don't technically have to tell us. Um, I generally ask as a courtesy um, sometimes. So with we in an attempt to address the number of tabled cases that we have, because we have a lot right now, um, a couple of these applicants who have been on the edge. So for example, the cases 10B and 10C, they have been on for over a year. Um, so when I reached out, a couple of weeks ago, I gave them a deadline in which they need to submit new materials by or else we will be. So it's not just a, hey, are you still working on this? Yes, okay, we'll keep you on. Um, both of those cases have to give us uh, new application materials prior to the May meeting. So we're looking at those two as ones that uh, might be coming off in the May meeting. Yeah, I, I think if, if there's no ordinance <clears throat> or um, bylaw or anything that governs how we handle that, then perhaps we should adopt one and either add it to the bylaws or just adopt it as a practice just so that we can have uh, you know, a, a timeline for getting these things off the agenda and it, it'll make it easier so we won't have to kind of wing it each time. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um that we can that there's something else I want to put towards the end of this agenda to get everyone's minds percolating and that's something that'll fit very nicely into that. Um but just continuing on with this one, does anyone want to make a motion for 148 Julie? I'll make a motion. I'll Did second it. All right. Um all in favor? Aye. 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 Lovely. All right. That being said, uh no other updates on any table of cases. Um like I said, I reached out to French American Academy and Sugartown. They need to get us new information prior to the May meeting. Um, 11 Erie Street, still working on it. 289 Pavonia reached out to that attorney. They're also still working on it. And 591, um, they're likely looking at a June uh, carried. They're likely going to carry to June instead of May. It says May on here. They'll have to get me a letter saying they're requesting June. But yeah. Um, as I said earlier, we are going to... Um, do our election of officers at our second April meeting. Um, and then before we finish out the rest of the agenda, so at our next HPC meeting, which is the 24th, um, we've mentioned it over the course of the past couple of months, but um, we are currently in the process of redoing the historic preservation element of the master plan. Um, we, uh, throughout COVID, did uh, the land use element and the open space element finally historic preservation elements time. Um, and our consultants, uh, we have two sets of consultants. We have uh, H2M Associates and we have Easton Architects working on this for us. They will be coming to um, our next HPC meeting and giving a short presentation um, as well as soliciting some feedback on you from you guys regarding changes to the element. So Robert, that uh, adding some either an ordinance or amendment to our bylaws for a timeline for that is something that would be a, like a change that could be reflected in our master plan element of something that we want to plan to do or something that should be implemented things like that so if we have you guys have thoughts on um, specific parts of the hpc ordinance or things that we want to see incorporated as guidance for the future just nothing too formal just get your kind of percolating in your head as you think about it and as we prepare for that meeting um, we don't, won't have many other applications on for the next meeting. I think we have two planned right now. Um, in addition to that, so hopefully we won't. It won't be a monster long meeting either. Great. All right. That being said, um, we have no resolutions to introduce, introduce or discuss. No resolutions to memorialize. We do not need an executive session. So that just leaves us with adjournments. 
Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, it is 7-18, all in favor? Aye. Aye.